Fashion Anthropology, Fashion Genio Gaku, l'anthropologie de la mode. Je suis Tiffany Godoy. On Fashion Anthropology, we deep dive into the movements and minds shaping fashion culture today. From street to luxe, Shanghai to Paris, underground to legendary. Slam Jam, connector, patron, platform, movement, attitude. Slam Jam. As Slam Jam curator Gabri emphasized in episode one, they are heavy into art. Like a contemporary underground Medici family, they support and showcase an endless stream of emerging on the edge art talents. Musician Isaiah Barr of Onyx Collective and artists Leo Orta and Victor Miklos of Orto Miklos. Fashion anthropology. Alessio Ascari joins us from his headquarters at Slam Jam's Spazio Maiocchi Gallery in Milan. He curates the space and publishes the progressive art culture magazine Kaleidoscope. They've just launched their new annual festival, Kaleidoscope Manifesto. Fashion Anthropology. Episode 4. Mécène des Arts. Ciao, Tiffany. Ciao, Alessio. So, for our listeners who don't know Kaleidoscope, it was, wasn't an art magazine, it's not a culture magazine, it's not a fashion magazine, but it's all three at the same time. And on the spine, I have an issue of it right next to me. It says, Almanac of Contemporary Aesthetics. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, that's the idea. I mean, we started uh, like almost 10 years ago now. Uh, so we're, we're getting old. <laughs> but uh, at a certain moment, we, we decided like to shift our angle a bit and look, you know, at what's going on like in visual culture, like 360, still from the angle of, of contemporary art. So I think that, I mean, we're, we're still, you know, basically like a contemporary art magazine, but it's more and more uh, hybrid because, you know, we are evolving with the times. So um, we are looking like at visual culture in a very horizontal way. And also because I think it's, it's a way of, of seeing and a way of thinking that, you know, especially like the new generation, a way of, of seeing and a way of thinking that, you know, especially like the new generation. Kaleidoscope's hybridized approach also includes takeovers by multitaskers like artist, designer, and Raf Simmons collaborator Sterling Ruby and Virgil Abloh. I mean, again, this, this multidisciplinary, uh, multi, you know, platform approach is also a kaleidoscope approach, like from an editorial point of view. So we're trying to connect with people that, you know, reflect the same uh, philosophy and the same, you know, uh, MO, the same way of working, etc. You know, Gabri said very similar things when he talked about the types of collaborations that Slam Jam does. It's very much about this kind of affinity and, and this sense of community that's really important. And um, obviously you you have that with Slam Jam. Can you talk about how you connected with them and what your what your relationship is? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Slam Jam, it's, I mean, we're a family and, uh, I mean, I knew Slam Jam from before, from, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up, you know, buying clothes from them because they're like a legendary streetwear company in Italy, in Europe, and, you know, globally. But especially for Italy, they were really, you know, also like an uh, educational platform for the kids because they were like the, the one and only like bringing to Italy uh, not only clothes, but all the culture around the clothes. Um, yeah, we connected, I think, like three, four years ago with like a special project during Salone del Mobile, the furniture, you know, the design week in Milano. And we, we, we uh, created this project together that was like a pop-up disco, like this crazy object uh, created by, you know, these two iconic German uh, designer, Konstantin Gricic and Mirko Borsche, that, you know, was at the time and still is our uh, art director of Kaleidoscope. Then he became also, in the years, also the art director of Slam Jam. But yeah, we, we started with this project and then, you know, we, we connected and uh, we felt that we were like sharing, you know, the same values and, you know, the same approach. And also we like, we wanted to, you know, change things in Milano, basically. 
So, yes, Pazzo Maiocchi basically started from this synergy. That's quite a sweet deal, man. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's kind of like, you know, to have a company like Slam Jam, which is, you know, there's so many examples of them supporting brands, supporting artists, and, um, you know, continuing this idea of collaborations. It's a real collaboration that you have. You're in the space, your office is there, and then you curate and create events that happen in the space. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Spazio Maiocchi, you know, started, it felt like 10 years because we really, you know, uh, worked hard, but it's like one year and a half now, which is crazy because we already did like so many, you know, exhibition events, concerts, live acts. Uh, It was like a super intense uh, kickoff. We kind of changed, you know, the cultural landscape in Milan. We kind of changed, you know, the cultural landscape in Milan. Yeah, I think we did because um, there wasn't like, I think, a gap in the city scene and maybe beyond because I think that Spazio Maiocchi right now, it's like an interesting, I think, cultural, you know, model globally, right? Because it's like one of a kind. But yeah, it's a social space where we do, you know, like a museum quality, like international museum quality programming of, you know, shows, performances workshops, events, but at the same time, the approach is very, you know, anti-institutional. So we like to think of Spazio Maiocchi as an anti-museum, which is basically, we don't have like, you know, bureaucracy, we don't have like a curatorial team. We're basically like a group of like young creative minds and we're like having fun. We are like inviting artists and creators that are part somehow of our world. How important is fashion for you in this and and even for Slam Jam? Is it really carte blanche for you to kind of go ahead with what you believe in and what you feel is is on the rise? Oh yes, we can be creative but at the same time and I think this is like the cool part, also like brands that we collaborate with can be creative, you know? They can do like experimental projects that they can do elsewhere because, you know, it's like a safe place for uh, being, you know, creative, experimental, and um, testing ideas. So it's like an exhibition space, but at the same time, we like to think as, you know, of it as like a laboratory somehow. So we like to think of Spazio Maiocchi as an entire museum. It's like an exhibition space, but at the same time, like a laboratory somehow. For the occasion of Slam Jam and Nike Blazer Class 77's launch, Onyx Collective created a short film and played at Slam Jam Piti Uomo's 30th anniversary installation. Onyx got Tachiagita member Isaiah Baga, Mata Slam Jam no Nisen Jukunen no New York to Tokyo Pop Up live Oshimashita. They're kind of like an unofficial house band. My name is Isaiah Barr, and I am an artist and the leader of the Onyx Collective. Alive since 2015, Onyx Collective is a shape-shifting project led by Isaiah Barr. It's turning jazz on its head. Bebop skaters is what they look like, but um, they play some serious jazz. They have their own merchandise. Released an album with Supreme. Yes. Glad to be here. Great, Great to have you here. Can you tell me a little bit about Onyx um, and this idea of collective and when you started it in 2015, what did you have in mind? When I started the collective, I just wanted to kind of uh, create a unity with a bunch of my friends and use that as a way to experiment and play shows if we could get shows. 2015, how old were you at that, at that time? Uh, it was 19. The word collective is about is kind of ever-changing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like these interactions that you have in your life mean that the collective, the definition changes and the equation changes. And Yeah, I think there's just like an open revolving door for those who want to join in and have fun. How do you know when the collective um, needs to metamorphosize? taking risks you know i think some of the best things have just been we're going to play the guggenheim it's a dance party let's write some dance music and let's just do it you know 
Let's make people dance. That can be the first catalyst of a, of a change. It can be a really small thing that then lends itself to a really big thing, and then it just keeps evolving. Yeah, I think this is like an open, revolving door for those who want to join in and have fun. Onyx played at the Guggenheim Museum in 2015. And the night before we spoke, he arrived in Florence with a big late into the night slam jam welcome. How did you get involved with um, Supreme? I think they launched your first yeah. album. Um, that was really also organic. It was just kind of like I was always friends with the people who worked in the company and at the store. And we were friends with some of the skaters. And um, through No Wave, there was a big connection. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of needed a place to put out a record once we decided we wanted to release the live recordings from No Wave. And Supreme felt like a perfect option. It's just a family kind of thing, and it's just something that works. It's a sensibility that we have, we have had, and something that we kind of grew up in. No Wave is a Lower East Side community radio station. Onyx's weekly show was a live, improvisational jazz session where acts like Dev Hines and Nick Hakim would sit in. This idea of community and, um, and streetwear and street fashion, how important is that to Onyx and your development as an artist? Yeah, that's everything, you know, it's like... A t-shirt is really just a t-shirt, and if you can get it to tell a story or have some real, real kind of uh, flavor and ambiance to it, that's great. But I think that it's all about supporting your community and being weird and being yourself. And I think in streetwear, there's a community because people like wearing things that their friends make or someone that they feel like could be their friend makes or someone in this gener this time, someone that they can reach. I mean, I can't reach Marc Jacobs, let's say. It'd be a lot harder for me to get in touch with Marc Jacobs than it would be like the owner of the good company or something, you know. Cool. Well, thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much, Tiffany. It's all about supporting your community and being weird and being yourself and it'd be a lot harder for me to get in touch with Mark Jacobs than it would be like the owner of the good company. The France-based art student duo Orta Miklos got a big break at Slam Jam's Petit Womo exhibition event. À côté des installations de Nike et Stussy, pour Carhartt Work in Progress, ce duo a fait une performance et collaboration sur quelques vêtements. Since then, they've also worked on a retail installation for Kiko Kostodinov. Je suis Leo Horta. I'm from Paris. Je heter Victor Miklas Andersen. Orta, Orta Miklas. Fashion Anthropology. When you got, um, when you were approached for the project, like what was the first thing that came to mind when you thought of Carhartt and then when you thought of what you wanted to do? Ooh, that's tough because the first think... challenge that we got was was first of all like, okay, what do you do in such a space? Yeah, you know, yeah, you got space Marino, Marini sculpture yeah. inside and that really presents, it's the reopening of the museum and how do you like, you know, try to not overtake the stage yeah. or how do you not disappear in such amazing works from him, you know, I mean, he's, as people say, like a king in figurative sculpture, Italian sculpture. Marino Marini was an Italian artist instrumental in the revival of the art of portrait sculpture in Italy during the first half of the 20th century. I think like we were looking at the, at the sculptures and like kind of thinking, okay, you know, one of the things we talked a lot about was like how you use like lost wax techniques for making the bronze sculptures. And actually nowadays you can do it with styrofoam as well. So we were like, can we somehow bring this process in. And when you think of like card VIP work in progress idea, you're fully into it, okay? And we were like, okay, that's what we have to showcase, you know? We have to show work in progress. We have to show work in progress. Work in progress. Um, you're, you're young, you're still students, right? Yeah. How does it feel to be given an opportunity to show in a museum like this and to create garments? 
I think it only opens it to wanting to make more now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I mean, we're super grateful that people trust so much in us because it must have been quite a hard sell, I imagine, because it's not like we have a big name or something like this. So for us to gi be given this kind of trust is something I can't stress how, how good it actually feels that, that people support it and are willing to, you know, put their head out for us. Uh, and it's great that a big brand like Carhartt and, you know, Slam Jam, Kaleidoscope, all of the guys, that they are willing to uh, go in, like they have like really helped us with uh, so many things, so many aspects. You know, I hope that more young people get space, you know, because, I mean, we are, we are really lucky and then we have, you know, all our friends that we study with, and, like, they're also individual and have so many great projects, but, you know, and uh, yeah, but also a great talents. Yeah, yeah, millions. <laughs> That's why you see in this kind of project how many collaboration gets done because we have so many people that are creative around and yeah. making those collaborations just like creates even greater things, you know, like I mean, having Slam Jam inviting three brands and then three brands inviting each themselves an artist and then Kaleidoscope wanting us to do something for, for this. Now, we were like, great, that is how we see the vision of making today. Yeah. Collaborations just like creates even greater things. That is how we see the vision of making today. Thanks for listening to Fashion Anthropology. More episodes on Slam Jam are available now. Get to know more members of the tribe. Deep dive into the culture of this legendary company that paved the way for the streetwear scene. Fashion Anthropology. Edité par Frank Aderer. Music, Krikor Kushian. Keep listening to Hypebeast Radio. Hypebeast Radio, kite kudasai. Restez branchés sur Hype Beast Radio. Fashion Anthropology.